So now in this video, I thought it'd be a good idea to review this topic here. If you're new to electronics, it's really important that you understand this. So um, I have LEDs in all kinds of my circuits. Usually there's a resistor that's uh, protecting them. It sets the current through the LED, but you can't just grab a certain value resistor and think that's how much current's going to go through the LED. You also have to know what the uh, supply voltage is. So uh, it may not be the actual supply voltage. It may just be what voltage actually makes it across these two components. Because uh, when you got things in series, the voltage gets divided up amongst them or it gets dropped in the case of uh, semiconductors. They tend to have a certain amount of the supply voltage that builds up across them, but it takes away that voltage from the other uh, components that are in series. Resistors are different. Um, there is no set voltage that builds up across them. As more current goes through them, uh, they need more voltage across them. So ultimately, it's their percentage of the resistance that uh, determines how much voltage is across them, uh, total circuit resistance. Uh, in this case, the LED is going to drop about 2 volts. So we're going to lose about 2 volts across the resistor. It's going to accept whatever the uh, LED uh, passes along, basically. Um, but in any case, it's that voltage across the resistor that's going to set how much current flows through them because LEDs do not limit current. They drop the voltage, so they kind of help with making sure there's less current going through them, um, but they don't set a current in any way. Um, so about two volts is gonna build up across it, whether it's 10 milliamps of current or 20 milliamps of current, very slightly, but hardly at all. Um, so uh, just be aware of that. Now, um, we are gonna set a goal in this video, 10 milliamps. So 10 milliamps is usually a decent amount of current to put through an LED. It's probably gonna be bright enough and it'll probably last a real long time. Um, you know, you get above 20 milliamps of current, it's probably gonna burn out, uh, you know, sooner or later, you know, get dimmer or whatever. Um, so probably 10 milliamps is a good uh, goal to aim for. And uh, with blue LEDs, even, even lower, because they get really bright at uh, lower current. Um, but in any case, 10 milliamps is still okay for blue LED right there. So to try to get 10 milliamps of current, if that's your goal, you take the supply voltage minus the drop of the LED. So I'll zoom in a little bit more right here. And uh, so you just do that math uh, right there. We got the five volts minus two volts is three volts across the resistor, if it's a red LED right there. And the uh, three volts across it, if our goal is uh, uh, 0 0.01 amps, which is the same as 10 milliamps, be aware of that. Then, uh, yeah, we just do that math. It equals 300 right there, 300 ohms that we will need. And uh, we'll get, uh, you know, pretty close to 10 milliamps of current in that circuit. If we have 5 volts across the resistor and LED, it's a blue LED, then the blue LED is going to drop about 3 volts. So to get that same current, now we have a different color. And uh, with the indicator LEDs, the blue LEDs will probably drop about 3 volts versus the reds uh, two volts. Um, and uh, so that's typically the case if you have blue and red LEDs. And uh, so now you do the same math. Five volts minus three volts will give us two volts across the resistor right there. If our goal is uh, 10 milliamps of current, uh, 0.01 amps, then uh, we'll need 200 ohms of resistance. The math is uh, that simple. So this is uh, one of the most important things to uh, learn when you're first learning electronics because it comes up a lot um if you're gonna use a resistor to set current through the circuit which uh, happens uh, quite often then you need to know the supply voltage how much the other components are going to take away from that voltage maybe you got a component that actually sets uh, a voltage across the resistor that becomes a current source when that particular uh, component makes sure the voltage always is the same across the resistor, whether the supply or other stuff changes or not. Um, that would be a current source. So again, this is a simple topic, but it comes up a whole lot. And uh, so it's a very important one to understand. So I thought this would be a good time to review that. This is an old diagram. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.